So welcome people of God. So yes, I am interrupting my sabbatical because this is a word that I just want so badly to get in front of you. Um, and so this morning in my God time, and I, I feel this word, I feel this word so intensely. I feel y'all know, if y'all know me, then when the anointing is super strong, I'm just like really emotional. So I, I already feel tears, like in the back of my eyeballs, I already feel tears. So, but I want to share with you this word from the Lord. And I just want this word to like super, super, super bless you. So in my time with the Lord this morning, I was doing like a, a little temperature check for the house. And so I was asking God about this house. I was asking God, you know, how is everybody doing? Like, like what's going on? And I was speaking about the house and, and asking God about this house corporately, collectively. And I didn't hear anything immediately. And so I went about my morning and I, and so a little while ago, I started to feel some momentum around something that me and the Lord have been talking about for a while. And I started to feel like momentum around that thing. And that's not unusual for me to be in my God time and just to feel this strong stirring. And so as I'm in this, this stirring and God is talking to me about me, stuff is spilling over that I know God wants to get to the house. That is, that is how God deals with me. And so as stuff is spilling over from God moving from just it being about me to the house, I start hearing God talk to me about, um, and I started hearing like hostile takeover. And so I'm, I'm, you know, writing my stuff that God's saying, that God is saying to me about me, but I'm feeling it for the house. And so I, and so like a few nights ago, I was talking to a friend and we were talking about, I was talking about this revelation that God had given me about the moment when God, commissions Joshua in the end of the book of Deuteronomy. And I was telling her how God had said to me and I had gotten the revelation from Holy Spirit that that was, that that is how God does, that when God is bringing forth the new in your life, it is right on the tail end or even in the midst of the old. Because when God has this one-on-one -on -one time with Joshua, Moses is right there. But prior to this moment in the entire book of Deuteronomy, God does not have any one-on-one -on -one time with Joshua. He only, everything that gets to Joshua comes by way of Moses. But now it's time for Moses to go. Now it's time for the old to go. And so God is giving the new its orders. Like God is telling the new in your life, you're up. And God is doing that in the midst of the old. And so there will be times in your life where you feel and you know God is calling you to the bigness of the new while you still feel very much attacked and surrounded by the old. Help me, Holy Spirit. And so I was I was ministering this to a friend of mine. And so in my God time this morning, God was bringing Joshua back up to me. And, and in this sabbatical, and I was talking about it in detail on the membership side, a lot of it is about the way that God is now maneuvering and leading me and, and, and now kind of like, just, just telling me, this is the way that you're going to go. Right. And so I myself feel like I am going through my own transformation and maybe I was in this lane and now God is like, you're in this lane. And so if you are governed here, right. And you feel like she's nothing like she was, then glory to God. That's how it's supposed to be. Growth is 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 of God movement is of God we're not supposed to be the same the Bible says that we are to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers your understanding of God today should not be what your understanding of God was in January or what your understanding of God was last year you should be you should be outgrowing some doctrine you should be up leveling your understanding you should be yeah I spent a lot of time doing that and, and fighting the devil and fighting demons. But now I understand my authority. So I'm over here. Now I'm over here where I know the harvest is guaranteed, where I know my authority, where I know my identity, where I know I have ease and light and joy. Now I'm over here. That's supposed to happen. And so as God was having me to lean 
into and 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 just just be in this place, right? I was I was heavy in the book of Joshua, right? Because I was talking to my friend about the end of Deuteronomy and the beginning of Joshua. And then God was talking to me about being a leader. And Joshua was a very different leader than Moses, right? Moses had a lot of heart for these people. And Joshua had heart for the harvest. Joshua wanted Canaan. It was Joshua and Caleb back in the book of Numbers that that was like, let us go up at once. And so Moses had a heart for the people and Moses let the people trip him up, right? When God told him to do one thing, but he did something else. And where he even intervened on behalf of the people telling God not to kill the people. But Joshua had a heart for the harvest. Joshua wanted to occupy Canaan. Joshua wanted what God said belonged to these people. They Joshua was with them when they had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. So Joshua had a heart for the harvest. So much so, so much so, right? So I'm, I'm right in the 10th chapter of the book of Joshua. And this is where you get to see the aggressiveness of God displayed concerning the harvest. This is where you get to see God be no holds bar with his people for what they have. So God is telling Joshua, kill off all of the old, kill off all of your enemies, big things, little things, animals, nobody gets spared in this thing. This land is to be like, like kill off all of your enemies. This is what God is telling Joshua. And the level of momentum and aggressiveness is so strong on Joshua and his men, even though they have armies against them, they have five kings at a time and their nations against them. But Joshua's momentum and the anointing and the power of God for him is so strong that Joshua prays a prayer that has not been prayed since and therefore has not been done since. God tells Joshua, listen, listen, bro, I don't, the sun can't move while I'm killing off these enemies. And so the Bible said the sun stood still therefore the moon had to too i said had to too and the sun in joshua 10 and 13 the sun josh joshua prayed for that he asked god to stay the sun until he defeated all his enemies let me tell you something oh my gosh this is why i feel it we get taught such a Joshua is a man. I, I don't believe that the Bible is a book of analogies or metaphors. I believe that these are real people talking to a real God, our God, a God that has not changed in who he is, in his power, his love, and his heart for us. And we've just been taught and we've been governed by these really pitiful, weak prayers. We, God asked Joshua to stay the sun. And there's people out here that can't even ask God for the specifics of their own heart. No, you know, God, let your will be done. God, whatever you say, you, you can't even, I told my friend a few weeks ago, because we were talking about something that I had asked God for that he did. And she was like, yeah, you know, I don't know about like asking God for Oh, I didn't know you couldn't ask God for what you wanted. I, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know I couldn't ask God to bless me with the specifics. I don't care if it's a man or if it's money. I didn't know that you couldn't ask God. Therefore, me and God don't have that type of camaraderie. We don't kick it like that. The Bible says that God did for Joshua what was supposed to be done with Moses. Let me tell you something, and, and I'm I'm talking to you about the kind of leader that I am. And if you've been here long enough, you are, I'm not playing about my harvest. I haven't been playing about my harvest, and I'm definitely not playing about my harvest. And I'm not playing about your harvest. If you're governed here, right? Listen, it is time for you to lean into, as we are rounding up for the last three months of this year, it is time for you to lean into a hostile takeover concerning your stuff. 
And this is not about no warring against the devil because the enemy is defeated. Yes, we are in the book of Joshua, but, but, but go, go to the end. Go to Colossians. Go, go to Philippians. Go to what, what Paul is talking about to the church in Ephesus. But it is time for you to understand and live in the fact that God is calling you to a hostile takeover. Do you understand? Like when you have a hostile takeover, you're not, you're not talking with your enemy. You're not talking with the devil. I don't even have no words for you. Jesus' interaction with the enemy is very different from what we see in, in Genesis. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus did not walk away <laughs> being deceived like Adam and Eve was because Jesus knew who he was. When him and Satan had words, the very first thing Satan challenged was his identity. With his identity, he said, if you are the son of God, Jesus said, first and foremost, I'm the son of man. First of all, let, let's, let's get that straight. Let's get that straight. And we, because of the finished work of the Christ, uh, of, of the Messiah, we have a relationship with God. We are made right with God. But we still acting pitiful and weak and passive. And well, I don't know what God said, and I don't know what I should pray, and I don't know what to do, and and I don't I don't know if God wants this for me. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? We spend so much time talking about all the ways that God can fail us and this and that going on in the church and people life out here looking raggedy. I don't know nothing about your life because I'm minding my business. The only time I know about your life is when God brings your life in front of me. And right now your life is in front of me. And you need to determine that you are in agreement with the hostile takeover for your harvest. A hostile takeover. This is what God put in my heart for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to go to bed praying. You need to be waking up praying. You need to be praying 24 seven. Oh, I just had so much going on in Romania. I ain't get my God time today. What? It's just life was just too busy. The kids and I'm stressed and I'm, how you, who is too stressed to pray? That's when you do pray. I said this in one of my previous words. You're not going to outpray me about me. You might outpray me about other stuff going on in this world, but you're not going to outpray me about me. Not about me. No. No. The only time I'm going to tell you to pray for me is when I'm exhausted praying for me, when I don't have breath in my body anymore to pray for me. And then I'm still going to pray for me. I'm going to pray for me in my head. And I'm talking about leaning into what God said is yours. I'm not talking about these weak, pitiful prayers that we've been taught. No, no. I'm talking about a hostile takeover for your harvest. I'm not talking about these prayers where you spend all day talking to the devil. I'm talking about these prayers where you call it in your harvest. That's a hostile takeover. I'm not talking about you walking the floor entertaining demons. I'm talking about you walking the floor and calling in your deliverance. That's what I'm talking about. A hostile takeover a hostile takeover. I'm talking about the kind of bold, I'm talking about we have a demonstration in the Bible where a man of God before the ascension asked God to not let the sun set and you scared to ask God for the kind of car you want. You going back and forth with God about money for a house. You going back and forth with God about a man. I don't know if it's him because the prophet said, what, "What? Listen, and I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to say this right because I know this gonna like step on some of, some of y'all toes." But what prophet did Ruth talk to? What prophet did Esther talk to? What prophet did Rebecca come? Trust the God in you. Trust the God in you. Trust the God in you. Because let me tell you. Everything that God is stirring up in me, for me, is a hostile takeover. So if you want to sit there and play these pity pad games with, with the anointing, 
and with the authority God has given you, then listen, be it done unto you. But as for me and my house, because this is what Joshua said. This is what Joshua said to these people. These people that he was called. Listen, <laughs> as for me and my house, 